Okay, for those who were around and actually watched that very first season of Produce 101, you might remember right after episode 5, they showed a teaser for the next episode and that's where this crazy footage of Somi seemingly being held back from a fight was shown. However, when episode 6 rolled around, that situation wasn't even part of the episode. Obviously, that created even more mystery behind it. Was it so bad that they decided to cut it out completely because it might hinder IOI? Because of the show's sketchy editing sometimes, a lot of people speculated that it could have just been a part of an acting class or challenge. Didn't matter though what the theories were, the quote unquote fight was just never aired, even to this day. Well, this week, five years later, Somi was on a live stream and decided to finally spill the beans about what happened. I came here to tell you all about what happened that day. <laughs> ah! Okay. I think you guys are all wanting me to have a big issue, but to be honest, I had no issue at all. Okay, I told the director, okay, director, Mr. Director, I'm going to act like I'm going to be mad, so please put it in the preview or something because it's going to grab attention. So he was like, okay, go on. So it was a whole act like i acted out nobody i had no fights at all like it was just me doing that all by myself and luen pak Suen was like pulling me backwards just to make it intense so yeah nothing really happened that day it was just me with my own show going on so <laughs> I'm sorry if I let you down, but I didn't fight. Now, I'm sure there are still conspiracies out there that this is a cover-up, but I'm personally going to choose to believe it because it would make sense why they didn't put it in the episode. If it was just a random thing she thought of in the moment, there would be no logical place to put it in that episode. Should they have aired it as a teaser? Probably not. But thank goodness it turned out to be nothing serious. Although, something that was not taken lightly this week was the set of photos uploaded by Gfriend So On with a mannequin wearing the uniform of a Nazi soldier. Now, before we get into it, I'm not a historian. I've seen many people differentiate various groups of German soldiers and their affiliations. For those who have more expertise in this, please educate us in the comments. I'm just here to inform you what happened after after these photos were uploaded. Because many people did identify certain things about the mannequin that pointed it to being a Nazi soldier's uniform, this obviously blew up. It turns out these photos were actually taken on the set of a VCR for one of their album comeback shows, but to many people, it was her gestures toward the mannequin that is concerning. Now, the photos were eventually taken down, and I've seen something going around that says so on only took the photos down to not make buddies jealous. But I haven't seen anything concrete to prove that's true. Let me know if you have. True or not, Source Music quickly came out and apologized, explaining the location was rented through an outsourced production company, but the on-site inspection was not aware of the mannequin's attire. They apologized for not being able to check in advance and bow their heads to those who felt uncomfortable with these photos and videos. And although Together with Gfriend trended on Twitter, a lot of people also used the tag to request an apology from Soan herself, not Source music. Like the way Stray Kids Han released a handwritten apology after a rap he wrote as a teenager recently resurfaced. The rap was originally uploaded to his personal YouTube prior to debut, but was eventually taken down at some point. Until earlier this week, someone re-uploaded it to Twitter, where people then discovered it contained derogatory comments, racial slurs, and insensitive uses of the terms regarding mental patients and mental hospital. However, Han quickly came out and penned an apology basically saying, this was in 2013 when I was 13 years old, but that is no excuse. This is completely my fault. I'm ashamed to have written something like this. The reactions I've seen toward Han after this apology is mostly positive, that his words seem sincere. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that if you were offended that you have to forgive him, that's your choice and your choice alone. I get it that some of these things might hit too deep for many people, race, skin color, mental health, we just saw Twice's Jungyeon make a surprise appearance at this year's Seoul Music.
Music Awards after her several month hiatus from quote psychological anxiety. I love that she made sure to let her fans know that everything is okay. I wish I could say the same about all the TWICE members because not only will JYP Entertainment have to up their security for TWICE and Nayeon especially again, it was recently reported that Chewie's home in Taiwan was robbed. Not only that, but it was robbed by someone they trusted. The family hired cleaning staff that was recommended by a family friend, yet the housekeeper broke the trust by stealing not money or anything like that, but signed albums and posters, merchandise that Chewie's mom collects to donate to charity. The police investigated and realized it was an inside job when they saw that there was no forced entry. It's just so crazy to hear these stories about idols and their families getting screwed over by people close to them. Just like when we talked about Lisa being scammed by her very own manager. Thankfully, the police in Taiwan caught the culprit. Everyone is okay. Jui doesn't have to immediately fly home. But we did get to see someone at the airport this week and it was got Seven's Mark. That's right, I'm still calling him got Seven's Mark getting his send off back to LA. We saw the members with him prior. Bam Bam uploaded a picture saying this was your first day in Korea? For those who haven't seen it, Bam Bam's mom said that since Bam Bam was so young when they were training, Mark was the one responsible for him and went everywhere with him. I promised myself I wouldn't do this. <laughs> But that wasn't the only news regarding an artist departing a company because yesterday it was confirmed by Cube that Elkie's contract had been mutually terminated. By the way, does anyone else think it's weird that they added the line, Elkie has been withdrawn from the group CLC as well? I don't know, to me it's just weird. Like with the GOT7 situation, all the guys are adamantly reassuring us that GOT7 is alive. GOT7 is still 7. But it's like Cube didn't want that and just had to add in the line, by the way, she's not a part of CLC. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Anyway, I'm happy that she's no longer in a company that doesn't manage or treat her properly, but I'm going to miss seeing her in CLC. It's like, I feel two things. It was just last week when I watched Soren's vlog of some of the girls from CLC and Idol eating together, just hanging out. I know it had to be footage from a while back based on Minnie's hair, but still. By the way, Idol's Hua music video won the last theory poll. If you want to vote on the next one, follow me on Instagram. The upcoming one will have Bobby, Dreamcatcher, Hyuna, IU, and a lot more. But for this video, let's break down Hua. In multiple interviews, the girls of Idol have said they've been holding on to this song for almost a year, opting to release it in January when the weather is cold. The very first scene of the music video is the seasons changing as we see the leaves begin to die and drift away. The leaves parallel the relationship and breakup they sang about in the preceding song of this album. And according to the girls, this song and music video for Hua associates the loneliness that sets in after that breakup with the bitter cold of winter. Everything about the white outfits and background is there to convey the frigid agony they feel. Although they try to shield themselves from the falling snow, the ice underneath is inescapable. No matter where they turn, the pain of heartache is still there. And with no end in sight and seemingly nowhere to go, the girls essentially become dead inside, now switching over to black outfits. That's why while Soyeon and Ugi sing in the nest, the crows surround them like scavengers ready to feast on a dead carcass. But this is where things heat up. After all, the title of this song, Hua, essentially means fire or the sound of it. The girls sing about igniting that fire, melting the ice that has covered their hearts, and burning away all the resentment that has consumed them. When they make this decision, the crows flock away as if darkness was leaving the screen. Because fire does not only provide heat, it provides light. We literally see darkness leaving the screen and light begin to shine on them. No longer are they wearing white, black, nor the color of fire. Their dresses and outfits now consist of a floral pattern as well as their surroundings as they sing about flowers blooming at the start of spring after a freezing winter. Just like the order of the songs in this album was intentional, so were the three main elements of this music video. The winter was their frozen emotions after a separation. The fire was their desire to melt away those 
those feelings and move on. And the flowers represented the beautiful growth that came from this experience. Because like Idol are trying to tell us, only when the wrong door shuts will you have the strength and drive to open the right one.